Oh, I got a clue. No, I know what happened. You know, if we play like that, we don't have a chance. This is Sports Center. An NFC East showdown in Dallas looking a lot like the Grinch came to town. The Eagles, impressive once again. Monday night, a soaky wet mess in Miami. Would Mother Nature and the Dolphins rain on the Jets' slim playoff hopes? And like brother, like sister, don't miss the story of a young woman who's already making football history. No one wants to see me in a cheerleading skirt, so don't even try it. Plus, a must-see matchup becomes a one-sided affair. Who drops 40 in Miami on SportsCenter right now? everyone, this is Sports Center. He's Steve Levy and I'm Carl Ravick. The NFL's Christmas gift was two games, both with playoff implications. The Jets were playing off-Broadway and they couldn't have been further off-Broadway with this particular performance. We'll find out what they did in a moment. But first, it was the Jeff and Tony show in Dallas. A Carl Garcia and the Eagles visiting Romo and the Cowboys. Dallas clinches the division title with a win. Philadelphia clinches the NFC East with two wins. And oh yeah, there's the T.O. factor. Brian Westbrook looking to carry the Eagles right on into the playoffs. Terrell Owens playing against one of his old quarterbacks and one of his old teams. Like Jeff Garcia to Matt Schobel, good for 25 yards with a score, 7-0 Eagles. There's a fourth and two for Dallas at the 29. Tony Romo, creativity, escapes the pressure, finds Patrick Creighton down to the six. They would eventually get down to the one-yard line. Out of the second quarter, Marion Barber has been inside the tunnel a total of 28 times. He scored 14 touchdowns this season. So obviously he's in the game. They give it to him. Stuff. He leads the NFC in rushing touchdowns. Stuffed again. Again to Barber on fourth and goal. I don't think so. Eagles stand tall. Barber does not do what he does best. Here's Garcia. In his own end zone to Dante Stallworth. That's a gain of 35. Garcia finished 15 to 23, 238 and a touch. Garcia, Schobel on the slant, down to the 11. It's third down. Ball on the three. Garcia, the give to Brian Westbrook, who gets pushed back at the line. Andy Reid, what are you going to do? He's going to opt for a 25 yard field goal of 10 nothing lead. Four minutes left in the half. Romo finds Terrell Owens. Four and a half left in the first half. That's the first catch for Owens. Second and three at the 14. Romo again eludes the rush. This time finds Owens end zone. Touchdown. It's a three-point game. Eight seconds left in the half. On the 43. Owens enters the game to play deep safety. Owens guarding against the Hail Mary. Never came. Garcia found Greg Lewis instead. That led to a 45-yard field goal. Third quarter now. L.J. Smith, the top of your screen, able to slip out. Garcia finds him all the way down to the 12-yard line. Eagles kick a field goal, increase their lead to 16-7. Have that happen? Watch L.J. Smith. He engages Jason Hatcher. Then watch Kevin Burnett. Completely loses track of Smith right up the gut, making it look easy. Dallas on third and 19. Romo flushed. Slings the ball downfield to Owens. Can't come up with the catch. Hey, T.O., what about the play? He bumped me uh, late down the field, and I just tried to regroup. And by the time I looked up and located the ball, it was right on me. I thought he was going to throw a flag once, they, uh, once he bumped me. So I didn't really get a chance to really focus on the ball. More from T.O. shortly. Fourth quarter. Cowboys down 16-7. Here's Romo again looking for T.O. This time Brian Dawkins. That is one athletic, smart interception in the end zone. Nine minutes left in the fourth. Garcia. What a ball game he's played. What an Eagles career he has had as starting quarterback. The scramble for 12. Pumped up. No flag for that enthusiasm. Later. Corral Buckalter barrels his way in. Philly wins. And with so, they clinch a playoff spot. Hard to remember when these Eagles were five and six. Garcia led them to scores on four of their first five drives. Philly's defense did their part. Dallas never led. Set a season low with 10 points and 119 yards. In comparison, Brian Westbrook ran for 122 all by himself. No such numbers put up by Terrell Owens. He was shut out in the second half. Two catches, 23 yards, including that 14-yard touchdown in the first half. Apparently not enough to satisfy T.O.'s healthy appetite. It's hard to get in the flow when you're getting the ball here, ball there. And then late in the game, you know, they start throwing the ball to me late. By that time, it's, 
it's too late. I'm just embarrassed, you know, by the way we played. We owe our fans better than what we show. So, you know, whatever booze that we're, we're given, then we deserve it, you know, because this is not – this is not how we play football. We were non-competitive tonight. I just finished telling the team that. We really didn't do a good job. I'll take responsibility for that. It didn't look like we were too well prepared. And I think our inexperience in these kind of games hurt us. We just didn't ever have a chance to, to get back in to the game. We just didn't do it. It was just the... You're playing for a bye. The listen, I know what we're playing for, Jennifer. They don't know what we're playing for. I'm just trying to tell you what happened. So, you can't play like that and not be disappointed. I mean, there's not anything really good to, to, to say. All righty, as for the team that actually won the football game, the Eagles' victory helps clear up another piece of that NFC playoff picture. Philly's in. They now no need only a home win against Atlanta or a Dallas loss next week to Detroit to clinch the division. Monday's Cowboys loss means the Saints clinch a first-round bye for the first time in franchise history. And while the Cowboys already have their playoff spot, they now need to win and hope for an Eagles loss if they want to call themselves NFC East champs. When Donovan McNabb went down in week 11, those who follow the birds had to believe the team's playoff hopes went down with them. But Jeff Garcia has been able to keep the Eagles clicking in the five weeks since. Four and one as a starter, he had as many wins as he has personally in the last two seasons combined. Just extending his career, we're joined now by the uh, St. Nick of Sports Center, <laughs> Sean Salisbury, set to deliver. You look at Garcia, he's playing not only for his own career, but he takes on these division foes on the road and gets the job done. He's comfortable, he's confident, but what allows him to succeed at this level? Well, Ravi, remember this West Coast offense that we call it. He yep. was comfortable, went to three Pro Bowls with it when he was in San Francisco, so it fits him well. He's comfortable, he stands in there, he's confident. And with this, remember coaching in this situation, while it's important, it's about the players and everybody's rallied, and Garcia can beat you with his feet and his arm at 36 years old. There you see him scrambling for a first down. One more time, keep a play alive now. Don't turn it into a bad play. Hit Brian Westbrook. Whether it's a three or four yard gain, you stay out of a bad play. Again, no hesitation. That's why he's comfortable in this. He sees an opening, he gets it down close to the first down. One more time. Do it again. Look for the swing pass. It's not there. Covered. Gets the first down and gets down. This is just a smart, heady football player who gets it now. A little bootleg. Square your shoulders to give you a chance with a run pass option, and he does and gets down before DeMarcus Ware can hurt him. Nice job. Once again, play action fake. Square your shoulders again. Now hit the ground running and get the first down. He's doing it with his feet, his arm, his presence, and everybody else has upgraded their game when they lost Donovan McNabb. And then with the feet. You tell me if there's any wasted motion here on this throw down the middle to Schobel for the touchdown. One more time. Have a look at how quickly the ball comes out when he decides to pull the trigger, and he does. No one Roy Williams is coming over the top. Nice job with his eyes. That's just veteran football, understanding how to get it up, get it down, and get it in the end zone. And they've got players on that football team that have all decided to take on more accountability and responsibility now that number five, Donovan McNabb's on the sideline. Garcia has been spectacular. Field goal late in the first half was huge. Four third down conversions on that first drive. They converted them all. Meantime, if the Cowboys were, were cake. You know, <laughs> what were the Eagles delivering then? Well, there may not be a lot of angel food cake, but the Eagles' defense has been delivering pound cake. I mean, they've been oh. knocking people in the mouth the last couple weeks. With Garcia, they also realize they have to upgrade their play. And have a look now at the way they're getting after it up front. Nice job by Jeremiah Trotter, who's been a staple in the middle. Now, I love this. You've got a couple big fellas coming out. Watch Brian Dawkins, why this guy's always in the Pro Bowl. Brian, there's a reason why you're one of the best players in the league. Blow them both up and get in there and allow your guys to make a play. And then you're going to get down at the goal line. Marion Barber, first time. Uh-uh, not getting in. 13 rushing touchdowns this year, not this time. Let's try it again. Inside, stuffed again. Low man wins at the goal line. The Eagles were low on that. Then you got off the, off the corner, get him in the backfield. I hate the play call on the pitch. Nice job. And then finally, you get Romo dropping back to pass. Pressure inside again. This time, Darwin Walker brings him down. You're going to get a chance now as we flash here. Darren Howard, boom, putting in there. Nice little throw by, getting to the quarterback, wrapping up. Tony Romo's feet allow him to buy time, and he did it at times in this game. And then the corner blitz, he doesn't see it by the time he does. Another nice job by Roderick Hood wrapping him up. So when you're in this run and you're playing this well, you must you must have all phases of the game, including special teams, play well. And to give Andy Reid, the head coach, and Marty Morningrig credit, I haven't seen anybody call better games the last four or five weeks than they have. They understand the situation. And you'd love in. to ignore the things out of T.O.'s mouth, but what game does he watch? He well, wants it more often. He wants it earlier in well, the game. I never knew a game was over until it was over, to state the cliche. Ball hits you in the chest. The reason why you're not getting it is because 
you're dropping balls. And here's what. I used to preface his name, forget all the antics, by saying great before it, great football player. Yes, he's a great talent, but Ravi, I can't call him great anymore. He's good. He's become just a, eh, another guy at wide receiver in this league. I will require you to be great later as we look at the wild card races and also the AFC mud matchup between the Dolphins and the Jets. Exactly, Ravi. Plenty more NFL ahead inside Sports Center, including that Monday night matchup in Miami with playoff implications. How about those Jets' postseason plans? Are they now all wet? Plenty of NFC postseason insight on the way as well, including which teams in need of a Week 17 win will deliver and which teams will not. But first, Kobe taking on Dwayne Christmas Day. Why this one-on-one -on -one showdown turned out to be completely one-sided. Exceptional values on your favorite Lexus vehicles. The Lexus, December to remember sales events. Sadly, many deserving online videos go unwatched every day. Without you, music videos, news clips, full length TV shows, and many other worthy videos will never reach their full potential. Fortunately, there's a solution. For just zero cents a day, you can bring a quality online video into your life whenever you want. Make a difference. Just click play. This message brought to you by video.aol.com. Sports Center, brought to you by the Lexus December to Remember sales event, now through January 2nd. And videoaol.com. This is Sports Center on ESPN. Final score of the Lakers Heat Christmas Day game. Uh, let's say 101 to 101 to 99 Lakers in a thriller, Christmas Day thriller. Uh, he was he was partially right. Kobe dead on with his prediction of one team having 101 points. The NBA re regifting the Lakers and Heat on Christmas Day, but this time around it was missing something, something large. Shaquille O'Neal still recovering from knee surgery, so the focus shifted to Dwayne Wade. Although O'Neal made his presence felt, telling Wade pregame to play his game and mix it up. Phil Jackson made his point at halftime, telling his assistants. He thought he'd stay in the locker room and watch a Christmas carol. <laughs> Quote, I did not feel we were right from the opening tap. Here we go to South <laughs> FLA, specifically <laughs> Wade County. Kobe played in the game despite having a touch of the flu. The Wade, the drive, kick out. Udonis Haslam connects. And Shaq, Natalie attired, watching Miami up by three. Darrell Wright, back door to Wade, who slams it home. Miami up four. Here's your next possession for the Lakers trying to answer. Kobe lobs down to Kwame Brown, posterizes Alonzo Mourning. Midway through the first, heat by five. Jason Williams, the dish to Wade behind the back to Wright. Miami up seven. Here's Wade driving. Interesting form of kick out to Wright, who buries the long jumper. But Miami have not. It's all going well for Miami. Smush Parker pulls up Wade there to knock it away. Check it again. Wade, tons of blocks lately. They have three blocks in the first quarter for the little fella. Meanwhile, Kobe was struggling. Was it the flu or was it the heat? Driving baseline, can't get the reverse lay-in. Roni Turiop saves the ball, gives it back to Kobe. And that's not close, side of the backboard. Kobe off the inbounds, no good. Kobe missed his first six shots. And now we move to the second quarter. Kobe, hey, throw a party. Finally connects on a jumper. Kobe, four points on 109, shooting the first half. Again, he did have the flu. There's a spin, and there's another rejection. Right this time gets it. Check it again. Right. All ball. Kobe running the floor. Nice pass to Toriak for the slam. And at halftime, Wade talked about Kobe's struggles. Kobe is a guy who, you know, got all the moves in the world, can make tough shots. So 
We're just trying to make it tough on them. Um, you know, make them use the teammates more and then close out on them. Hopefully they don't hit as many. All right, at the half, it was all heat and all Dwayne Wade, the reigning finals MVP, got the best of the reigning scoring champ, outscoring Kobe 16 to 4 in the first 24 minutes. Wade continued to show his ability to get to the line, attempted 10 first half free throws. That was one fewer than the entire Lakers team. Ravi. I tag team would Kobe find a miracle cure in the locker room at the break. Second half, Lakers certainly needed him to, but it was Wade doing it again, just the way he started the game, which was passing. Haslam jump for Miami by nine. Later in the third, heater up seven. Wade goes lane behind the back. Peyton from three, they're up 10. 11 assists in the game total for number three. More Wade past Kwame. Woo! An outrageous night is the way Pat Riley described it. Wade puts the heat up by 12. Later in the third, Kobe driving. This is a pretty move. Four of 17 total in the game. No cure at the half. One more look, though, as he finishes with 16, which is one, one better than his season low of 15. Fourth quarter, the Heat are up nine. I like that. Was it the flu or the Heat? Wade spinning through the double team over Maurice Evans. 12 of 20. He hit 15 of 16 from the line. Here's seen splitting the D. He went for a 40 spot. Later in the quarter, Miami up 10. It's Wade. Called it his all-around best game. The steal, running the floor, finds Peyton. He had four total steals. The Heat win it. And the Heat have been outstanding. Winning four in a row at home. O'Neal, who watched this game on Wade, with only a subtle bash at his former teammate Kobe. Quote, that's why he's the best. And now Wade on Wade. Just a special one, man. On Christmas Day, we get an opportunity to play, so you try to go out there and seize the moment. And today, you know, I was kind of like the, um, the quarterback of the team. You know, I saw the whole floor and made the right decision. We've been playing well of late, you know, and, and you know, every day we, we're not even looking at our record. You know, we come in every day trying to get better. And today on our home floor, we came out with a lot of energy, executed well, and, you know, as long as we keep that up, we'll be all right. I say they're all right. Here we go. One more look. Head to head. Wade goes for 40, the fourth different player to score 40 on Christmas since 1990, and the first since Kobe did it in the loss to the Heat in 04. Kobe finishes with 16, and give Jarrell Wright, who didn't even know until about 20 minutes before the game, he'd be guarding him. Give him some credit. Shaq didn't play Monday thanks to Kobe Bryant's off day. Shaq still has the most points on Christmas among active players. Wade's 40 moves him up to fourth in the active list. Kobe does manage to join Shaq in the 200-point club. Second straight Christmas, Pat Riley gets the better of Phil Jackson. Phil still has Pat's number overall, including the playoffs. Jackson's won 41 of their 68 all-time meetings. He's got nine rings to Pat's five, though Riley's last ring is more recent. That was, of course, last season. We'll return, find out why our expert believes Dwayne Wade in the Heat, Shackless Heat, have the entire NBA right where they want them. Monday night in Miami, not a game the Jets could afford to lose, but when the Dolphins cooperate, straight ahead who stepped up on a rain soak Monday night, and Sean Salisbury rejoins us. Over five tons of towing capacity, 2,010 pounds of payload, it seems in thinking ahead, our engineers left nothing behind. Introducing the more comfortable, more powerful, more capable, all new 2007 GMC Sierra. We examined everything and overlooked nothing, then backed it with a GM 100,000 mile warranty. That's professional grade. Hurry in for incredible savings throughout the store at Circuit City Spectacular Sale and Clearance. Right now, get up to 10% off TVs. Plus, all home theater surround sound systems, receivers, and speakers are on sale now. And it's a perfect time to save on everything you need for everything you got. All memory cards, digital frames, and camera bags are on sale. And you'll save 40 to 50% on camcorder batteries, camcorder blank media, and more. Only at Circuit City. Get all the college hoops you can handle with the ESPN Full Court Pay-Per-View Package presented by Olivia High Definition Televisions. Up to 30 games per week, available on TV and online. To order, call your pay-per-view provider or go to ESPN.com, search full. Remember when wishes came true? Yeah! They still can. Yes! 
Introducing the BMW Holiday Wish Event. The best time of year to buy the new 328i sedan. Lease a BMW before January 2nd and we'll make a contribution to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Wow, it's packed. Oh, there's a spot. Nice work, buddy. Hang on. Oh, I can't get out. I got it. Get any new Dodge, like the all-new Nitro, equipped with a Sirius satellite radio, and you'll get a 12-month subscription to the best radio on radio. Whoops. Now get the all-new Dodge Nitro with Sirius satellite radio, starting around 20 grand. This is a classic Rose Bowl moment. 1954, Michigan State versus UCLA. After the Bruins jumped out to a 14-0 lead, Spartan in Ellis Duckett blocked a punt and returned at six yards for a score. The decisive play was then provided by Duckett's teammate, Billy Wells who scored twice, including a 62-yard punt return in the fourth quarter. The Spartans prevailed over the Bruins 28-20 and started a six-game winning streak for the Big Ten. Watch the 2007 Rose Bowl presented by City New Year's Day only on ABC. Now the other Christmas NFL game, very little gray when you talk New York sports. The teams are either champions or they're chumps, the players are MVPs or they're flops. In the case of the two NFL entries, the Giants are a complete disaster. The Jets are the story of the season. Many are calling for Tom Coughlin's job. Others are calling Eric Mangini of the Jets Manginius. But the good can vanish in a New York minute, which means a second everywhere else, including Miami, where the Dolphins were ready for their role of playoff Scrooge. The weather certainly cooperated. It was disgusting. It was wet, it's humid, bad hair night all around. Joey Harrington couldn't grip the ball. Field goals were missed. Here's Harrington. The only grip was on him as he gets sacked. How about seven for 15, 42 yards, and a bench seat? Pennington, Leon Washington, hang him and bang him. Oh, my goodness. Michael Leon laid him out after he got hung out to dry. That wasn't the only popping going on by the Dolphins. Lavernia's Coles, I got it. Oy. Zach Thomas nearly took his head off. Left the game with a bad cut. He ended up with two catches and nine yards. Hello, I'm Lavernius. Third quarter, Dan Marino, Bob Greasy, Nick Saban. I'll take either one of you guys on your worst days. We're going instead with Harrington, earpiece, Cleo Lemon is in. The jokes would say they brought a lemon in. Almost picked by Kerry Rhodes. Three and out, lemon ice. Later in the third, Jets driving Pennington, Justin McCairns. Jeremiah Bell, that's not working. He gets called for the interference. Nuge, Mike Nugent came in, drilled a 22-yarder, 3-0. Three 3-0. Nothing. Three nothing. 7-3 when Lemon gets his first career touchdown on a pass. Randy McMichael's the receiver. Then all of a sudden, the court popped. Offensive plenty. Look at the move here. Juking is Leon Washington. Same drive, Pennington. The Midas touch. Cotchery. Give him a touchdown. Ball across the goal line before the knee hit. 10-7. Later in the fourth, the Dolphins punt. This is bad if you're wearing a Jet uniform and it's got a 55 on it. Brad Castle got hit by the ball. Dolphins fall on us on the ensuing drive from Miami. Third down, Lemon. Sammy Morris. Some big blockers ahead of him. Did he get the first? No. Olindo Mare hit a 25-yard field goal, tied at 10. Play of the game. Little Leon Washington on a screen goes 64 yards. Washington, 108 receiving yards in the game. Many of those of the yak variety with the yard after the catch. Nugent delivers again, and the Jets win it 13-10. J-E-T-S Jets on a messy night. They get the win. They set themselves up to control their playoff fate with a win next weekend. Pennington, 14 of 29, 237. Try to throw out the first three quarters. They were really good. And the good news for the Jets, they get the Raiders next to a two and 13. Take a look at the AFC wildcard chase. The Bengals, they get hurt a little bit by this Jets win. Broncos and Jets with wins, they're in. And it's the two teams from the Bay, the Niners and the Raiders, that are going to try to prevent that. Bengals, Titans, Jags, and Chiefs all keeping their fingers crossed, hoping those top two lose.
Well, I can't, can't get enough of Sean Salisbury. He remains here. <laughs> I'm not here. going anywhere, dog. Hey, whoever was able to cut a highlight out of that game, give that person a raise. <laughs> no, nowhere soon that's going to be on the ESPN Classic, that yeah. ESPN Monday Night Football game. All the points coming in the final 17 and a half minutes. Look, it was obviously ugly, but the Jets did just enough to, to accomplish what they needed to do. They've been doing just enough all season long. I believe Eric Mangini's the coach, coach of the year, given what he's had to work with. No disrespect to the Saints and Sean Payton, but Chad Pennington, he's also the comeback player of the year. Nobody expected him to finish the season, let alone finish on this note. Now, you know what? Statistics weren't alarming, but in the fourth quarter, they were. Six and nine. Look at the 144 yards. Are you kidding me? Just enough air to get it over the corner, and before the safety comes over, nice completion. He is so poised under pressure and you know what I don't care what people say about his arm strength he's accurate now he knows where shoulder to throw it on to give Leon Washington a chance to run after the catch for the first down arm strong enough right there Pennington one more time little pump fake sets in the pocket down the middle Are you, you can't that's six micro micrometers and a Russian cosmonaut you can't stick that in there like that but Pennington does Six and nine in the fourth quarter. He's been spectacular. And when you come back from what he's come back from, this is as good a story as there is in the NFL this year. And it's not just a good story. It's a good football team because this New York team blows away the other New York team. Give me a free look into next week. I mean, it sets up, you know, they don't officially clinch a playoff spot tonight, but the Raiders all of a sudden now have something to play for in New York, travel cross country. All the Jets have to do is, is beat the worst team in the conference to clinch a playoff spot. So not only are they going to beat them, I'm not sure that the Raiders, when they get there, most of them cars will be parked, I mean, packed up and ready to go. I'm not even sure they're going to board the team plane back. They may stay in New York and party. The Jets will win this with all this on the line. They're not going to let it to get to this point. The Raiders are just not good enough offensively to move the football, period. All right. Nick Saban suffers through his first losing season in 13 years as an NFL and college head coach. Much more NFL coming up from Sean Salisbury. That Bama talk's only going to get louder. More NFL comes right up. Sean takes his picks on those AFC playoff matches. Same experts, all three different conference, the NFC teams, which will pull off those must wins in Week 17. Randy moving. Is he going back to the desert? It's coming up. Hey, thanks for stopping by. You know, I, I followed your character since the first episode. I'm a, I'm a big fan, big, big fan. Thank you. And hey, listen, your storyline, it makes for incredible TV drama. Thing is, your drug use is very adult content. Too adult for the kids. So I'm gonna have to block you. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, have a good one. You're a nice lady. If you've wished for a Saturn Ion all year, or a Saturn View, or maybe a Saturn Aura, here's something that'll make your wish come true today. The Saturn Red Tag event. The price on the tag is the price you pay. And all 2007 Saturn models come with the GM 100,000 mile five year powertrain warranty. It's that simple. See some red, save some green. It's the best time of the year. Look for the tags and get special deals at your participating retailer on all 2007 Saturn models. The Visa check card. Because money shouldn't slow you down. Life takes faster money. Life takes Visa. Welcome to the high def viewing experience. Doesn't look any different. Sir, look at the resolution, the colors. Uh, he means it's no different than the one at Walmart. <laughs> yeah, why does it cost so much more here? Well, we do have a super solar savings event. Oh, when's that? Every total solar eclipse, not lunar, solar. Sun comes around and sail. <laughs> The same brand name HDTVs without the ridiculous markups. Get smart before you buy at walmart.com slash HDTV. Meet America's newest secret agent. Thank you. He's got the cover. You're Dutch. You have never heard of Dutch chocolate? Three color. He's got the moves. 
He's got. Tell me about Jake Rogers. Jake is my man. The backup. So you gonna shoot me? That's what I've been waiting on. If I die, I'm Tupac. If I live, I'm 50 Cent. Codename, The Cleaner. It takes years of training to do what I do. Hey, hey. Give it a stop. That causes shrinkage. Rated PG-13. Starts January 5th. Remember how we used to tell people you don't need a glass to drink in a draft in a bottle? Ah! What the? Oh, I'm hit. Ah! Yes. Well, I found a better way. It's called the TV commercial. Drink Guinness Draft from the bottle, not a glass. Ah! Oh, I'm hit. The TV commercial. Brilliant. Brilliant. Please enjoy Guinness Draft responsibly. We're back. Let's reset. Since their first 89-yard drive, the Eagles totally dominated the Cowboys in Dallas and now own the top spot in the NFC East. Brian Westbrook and company, they get the job done. Jeff Garcia was outstanding, finding Matt Schobel here. That put him up 7-0. Second quarter, the Cowboys are down 10-zip. Romo, he finds Owens. Really the only highlight for either player. Romo for T.O. this time. Pick Brian Dawkins in the end zone with an outstanding Willie Mays type catch. Same score, Carell Buckhalter barrels his way in. 23 7 Eagles. This team was 5 and 6 going into December. Ed Werder on the league's best backup QB. The only thing more improbable than the Eagles' revival from despair to the cusp of the division title is the unlikely quarterback leading it. Jeff Garcia quickly turned concern about the Cowboys' string of bad defensive performances into alarm as the Eagles took over Monday's game with Garcia leading a pair of early 89-yard scoring drives. I just saw us take control of the game. It wasn't about them, it was about us as a team. And we took control from the start of the game and never looked back. He's like the hype man in the huddle, man. I mean, he gets us going, you know, as an offense, you know. And he has confidence in us, and we have that same in him, and we just get, get rolling. I know what happened. OK, but I, I'm not going to go enumerate because you, you guys would have to go send out for Chinese food by the time I finish that. Redeeming himself from failure in Cleveland and Detroit, Garcia has prevented the Eagles from collapsing as they did upon losing Donovan McNabb last season. At the point of the season when he came in, uh, the team needed to fight. And when Jeff got in there, he's, he's, a, he's a fighter. Not only um, he's making big plays, his leadership on the field, you know, he's running around like a crazy man and, and you know, cheering for the defense. And I, I love that, you know. Last week, he, he kissed me on the helmet. I wasn't too happy about that, but, you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, just the leadership, man, and uh, just the emotion he brings. And uh, he, he's been a big lift for us. As they say, we, we, you know, we circled up. And nobody can get in that circle and tell us that we weren't going to be able to do what we're doing right now. What Garcia has done already is lead the Eagles to three consecutive road victories and put them in the playoffs. If the league's hottest quarterback beats Atlanta at home next week, the Eagles will have their fifth NFC East title in the last six years. At Texas Stadium, I'm Ed Warder, ESPN. Like I have to introduce him again. That's right. We're gonna change the name of the show from Sports Center to Salisbury Center. Sean is here for something like we like to call "Take Your Pick." We're gonna go NFC style. Now here's the deal: up to the second in the NFC playoff picture, Sean. Stay with me here. Five of the six NFC playoff spots have been clinched, so five teams are still alive for the final playoff spot. All five are seven and eight. That means a seven and nine team could make the playoffs. All five on the road. Giants were the current tiebreaker leader play on Saturday at the Redskins, meaning the other four teams will know on Sunday what they have to do. Sean, what will those other teams have to do? Take your pick beginning with that Giants-Redskins game. Well, you the way the NFL is, the way the Giants are played, you'd go Redskins. No, I'm going to go with the Giants. They've got to have some pride, don't they? I know a Tiki Barber and Michael Strahan, even though he may not be ready to go because of the injury, this team does have pride. Maybe Tiki's last game. I expect the Giants to go in there, play physical football, and make it tough on quarterback Jason Campbell. It will not be easy, and they must play with more enthusiasm than they did yesterday where they got hammered. Give me a feel for the Falcons and Eagles. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to go with the uh, Eagles, the way they're playing. The Falcons, to me, are, 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 are a bit putrid right now. They don't do much well, and this is a football team that's way too talented to be in this position, but I like the way the Eagles are getting after it. They want the division now. They're hungry. They're going to go after it. There's no more well-coached team overall in the league. I'm going with the Eagles. Rams-Vikings. This would be 
interesting. I, the way the Rams are going, they could make some head wave in the NFC. I'm taking them. You're talking with dealing with a younger quarterback in Minnesota. The Rams are great indoors because they know how to throw the ball. And this guy, Steven Jackson, has been a beast all year long. Mark Bolger quietly throws up yards. I expect a big offensive show and a lot of yards through the air for the Rams. Take your pick. Pack Bears. Wouldn't it be great to see Favre in there? Uh, not this time. The Chicago Bears, who need to get out some kinks. I think their players need to play, even though they've got home field advantage clinched. I'm taking the Bears. They don't want to go into the playoffs feeling like they're feeling, even though they won and they're 13-2. and two. It's a 13-2 and two team that I don't believe has a whole bunch of confidence, but I'm going to take them to get it back next week. Panthers, Saints, holla at me. Um, you know what? The Panthers are my Super Bowl pick. Shows you how ignorant I am. But the Panthers are the most disappointing team in the league. I'm going with the New Orleans Saints. Love Drew Brees as a second pick in the MVP, and this team has over achieved in certain positions, but they've got a ton of weapons. It's not just a great story. It's great football being played by the Saints, led by Drew Brees. Panthers may blow them out next week. All right, if the games break down the way Excuse Sean me. says they Saints may blow them out next week. I know what you mean. Thank the you. The NFC playoff picture would look like this. Sean has the Giants getting the final wild card berth thanks to a win Saturday over the Redskins and Green Bay's loss, meaning the Giants will open the playoffs on the road against Philly. Eagles win the NFC East with a Week 17 victory. The Eagles win would send Dallas on the road to face Seattle, which has already clinched the NFC West. Again, all of that according to Sean. He's back to play a similar game with the American In football In the better conference, conference leaves. <laughs> Look out for Salisbury Center. Week 17 winners could very well turn into playoff winners. We'll find out as the show rolls on. Little reset of the Lakers Heat, third annual Christmas Day game. LA may want to see their series cease and desist. They have now dropped three in a row. Darrell Wright guarded Colby all game, and he also got some work done on the offensive end. Dwayne Wade had 40 points. Here a little behind the back. Uh, Wright guy, Heat by 14. Wright had 10. Second quarter, Wade playing some defense. Strips Kobe, who had the flu. He goes the distance for a pair. He had four steals. Kobe had 16 points on four of 17 shooting. Wade, 40 points, 11 assists, four blocks. The Heat win big. They shoot 51% from the field, 43% from three. Dan Patrick, Mike Wilbon, courtside with Countdown. Greetings from Miami, where the Miami Heat, for the first time this year, have defeated a team with a winning record. I don't know if it's too early to make statement games, but would you classify this as one by the Miami Heat? I would call this a statement game, Dan, and I don't think it's too early when you get off to as slow a start as the Miami Heat did this year. Dwayne Wade's statement on Monday was, don't pay attention to the 13-14 or 14 record. Pay attention to what we're able to do against a team with a winning record, the Los Angeles Lakers. Remember, Shaq's coming back in a month, and Dwayne Wade, while he doesn't go around popping his own jersey, he can make a pretty great statement all on his own with a 40-point night, dominated the game from start to finish. Let's handicap these two teams, where they stand now, and when this season starts to play out, when we get to April, how good are these teams going to be? Well, the Lakers are the best team now. There's no question about that. They have a winning record between in the Western these two. Conference between these two. Okay. But the Miami Heat, when, 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 as long as Shaquille can stay healthy and you have to have Dwayne Wade healthy, I think the danger is in thinking, oh, we can turn it on like we did last year. Pat Riley doesn't want that, but he may get it anyway. And they know, sort of like the Houston teams of the mid-90s with Akeem Olajuwon, they can turn it on come playoff time, and they can make the same kind of run. If not all the way to the championship, they can still make the kind of run that the Lakers don't know they can make just yet because they didn't win a round last year and didn't even make the playoffs the previous year. These two don't take long to get reacquainted January 15th in Los Angeles.